Hello everyone, welcome back to Andrina's Creations. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to customize my template for the party blowout. You're going to see how easy it is. Now the template is compatible with Silhouette and Cricut. Can y'all see that win? The stuff I do for you guys, just because I like the lighting outside better. But anyways, let's continue. This is going to be a very quick tutorial. You're going to see how easy it is to customize them. And this is great for those events that the parents don't want to provide treats and candy and chip bags and stuff like that. So you can always provide custom items like this. Now for your materials, the only thing you're going to need is a printer and some white cardstock. The white cardstock, I prefer 80 pounds and up, but if you only have 65 pounds, that's perfectly fine. And if you don't have a printer at home, that's perfectly fine as well because you can print somewhere else, which I will talk more into the video about all that stuff. Again, materials, your party blowouts, you can get them even from the Dollar Tree, Amazon, or any store that provides party blowouts just like this and they have in different colors and cardstock printer and software okay so let's get this tutorial started once you open up your software you need to prep your page size so you're going to go to the first icon on your right it looks it says the page setup where it says media size you're going to put it for 8 by 11 because that is the paper size that you're going to be using and then sometimes your screen might look different than mine I just have my transparency on zero. Some people might have theirs on 100. Before we get started, I would like to let you know that you can use this software without owning a cutting machine. The basic edition is free. Check down below, I do have a separate link on how to download Silhouette Studio for free, but I am going to be using Business Edition. Business Edition, it is a one-time payment. I'm also affiliated with Swing Design. You get it much cheaper from their website. Usually the original price is $100, but when you get it from Swing Design, usually it's $60. Again, it is a one-time payment, and you do not need to own a cutting machine to use this software. Now, you're going to purchase the template from my website, andrinascreations.com. That link will also be down below. Once you download the template, you're going to save the template and you're going to extract it as well. Once you extract and save, then that's how you're going to bring in the template to your software. I am not going to be doing a Cricut tutorial because I am not familiar with the Cricut software yet. But how will you bring in the template into Cricut? Remember, you need to save it and extract it. Once you do all that, you're going to open up the Cricut software. Once you open the software, you're going to go to upload. You're going to go to upload image. You're going to go to browse. You're going to look for wherever you save the template. And you're going to select the SVG. Once you select that, you're going to click on open. Then you're going to go to upload. Click on the one that you just uploaded and click insert images. You're going to right click and ungroup the template. You're going to select each piece of the template and size it to the measurements that I provided. So right here is 5.334 in height. While your shape is selected, you're going to go to your height and you're going to type 5.334 and enter. Your width should be 3.50, which it automatically did it. You're going to go on the next one and type in those measurements and on this one and type the measurements. From there, I can't help you because, again, I am not familiar with the Cricut software. But that is the number one question is, how do we upload it and how do we size the template, okay? I'll be using Silhouette Studio. You're going to go to File. You're going to go to Merge. And you're going to also look for wherever you save the template. And you're going to upload the Silhouette Studio file and you're going to click on OK. For Silhouette, it's already all sized for you. You do not need to size it. You're going to click on your template. You're going to ungroup, right click and ungroup it. And then it's already sized. The pink layer will be the first layer. The blue layer will be the top layer if you want to do different designs. 
but all you need to do is really design the pink one if you do not want a layered effect okay all right where will you get your images there's several options you can go to creative fabrica i am affiliated with them as well you can go ahead and over there and purchase um images you can go to design bundles you can go to mushka i will have all those links down below you can go to etsy and you can also get images from google today i'll be just getting some stuff from google so i am going to be looking for safari leaves background once you like one you're going to click on it and then you're going to right click copy the image go into silhouette right click and paste so this is my background that i'll be using the pink layer i am just going to color it a solid color and how will you do that i am going to select my pink layer i am going to go to my fill option what looks like the paint palettes there is a dropper right here i'm going to select that dropper and I'm going to select, put my dropper near this background, just to select a green color that I would like. Then that I'm going to leave it just like this. Now this blue layer, I'm going to sit, send this back onto the back. So I'm going to right click it and send it to the back. And how do you zoom in? And now you have a plus sign here and a minus sign here. That's how you zoom in and zoom out. Remember, I right clicked and sent my image to the back. And now I am just going to put it that it covers this shape. And I am sizing it just by selecting the white rectangles and moving them up and down however I want them. Then I'm going to click here on my screen, drag my mouse to select them both gonna move this select them both how do you know both things are selected is if you zoom in you will see a rectangle around both items while both items are selected I'm gonna go to my modify panel how would you know the names of your icons on your right if you put your mouse over them you will see the names of the um, icons so I went to the modify panel and I'm going to click on crop okay then I am going to click here on my screen drag my mouse to select these both i'm going to go to my transform panel and then i am going to click on center i am going to right click them and group these two together and now they are centered now you also have this that i provided in the template this is just an extra design you do not have to add this or you do not need to add this one here in the front either you're going to do whatever you would like while this one selected, I am going to go to my fill panel. I mean, sorry, to my line style panel is under the fill panel. Do not get confused. If you go to the fill panel and you color it, you're actually coloring a layer. You do not want that. Leave it clear. You're going to go to your line style, which is right under the fill panel. And you're going to click on the icon that has the colors and you're going to color your line. Okay. I'm going to click somewhere here on my screen. I'm going to drag it to select everything. And I'm going to go to my transform panel. And I'm going to click on center. And I am going to right click and group this together. So now I'm left with this. Now you need to get images that are a transparent background images. How would you know they're a transparent background? That means they are a PNG image. If you don't find a PNG image and they have a white background, I have a separate tutorial on how to remove backgrounds using Remove BG. Also check down below for that link. But to make it easier, if you find PNG images, it will be much faster. So I am going to look for Baby Safari Animals PNG. PNG again means that they're a transparent background image. So if you click on an image and this has white and gray background that means it is a transparent background these you do not right click and copy and paste these you have to right click and save the image once you save that image and from here save all the images that you're going to use i am also going to look for this wild one so all i did was type wild one png and i click on it and it has a white and gray background 
little rectangles. So I'm going to right click and save this one as well. Once I saved all the images that I'm going to use, and again, this is just a quick tutorial, you are going to add as many images as you want and elements as you would like. There's two different options that you have. If you just save them to your computer, you could just go to your quick search and drag it into Silhouette. So if you just saved it, you can easily drag it into Silhouette. And because it is a transparent background, it's easily going to drag with a transparent background. And you're going to drag them. If you have these images already saved in your computer of, for a long time, you will go to File, you will go to Merge, and you're going to look for the images in the folder that you saved them. I highly recommend to have different folders for different elements. For example, for this one, I have a Safari um, folder just for Safari theme, okay? Now, once you bring in stuff into Silhouette, sometimes I have version 4.4, .4, so it automatically traces your images for you. That means that you're going to see a red outline around your images. So I'm going to hold, click on the wild one, hold my shift key, click on the safari animal, go to my line style option, and I'm going to click on the color, no color to remove that red outline. I'm going to place this image right here. And again, this is just a very simple design. And then the wild one, I'm going to size it down. How would you size it down? You're going to size it down with this white squares around it. I recommend dragging it from the corners and not extending it like this because you're distorting the image. And I'm going to rotate it using that little green dot. Okay, so this was a very simple stuff. Now, if you want to type the child's name, child's age, and stuff like that, you're going to go to the A on your left, A on your right, and you're going to select the font that you would like to use. I have a separate tutorial on how to download free fonts from thefont.com. But before you install fonts, you need to make sure Silhouette Studio is completely closed. Once you install them, then you will open up the software. Okay, so once you click on the font that you would like, you can also choose the color that you would like. And then you're going to click anywhere on your screen and then you're going to type. Once you type, you're going to get click somewhere else to get off the edit mode. As you can see, it has the red outlines as well. So you're going to go to your line style, click on the color option and click on no color. Okay, and then you will place the words wherever you would like. Now, once you are done designing, you're going to click here on your screen, drag your mouse, select everything, right click and group it together and you are done. If you do not have a print, um, a cutting machine at home, you can fit up to four. So you're going to right click and duplicate it. But if you do have a cutting machine at home, you probably want to do a print and cut and let your machine cut it. So how would you do that is you're going to go to your first icon on your right. That is the page setup. You're going to click on the third option. You're going to turn on your registration marks where it says thickness. You're going to bring it all up. Now, if you are doing a print and cut, you cannot cut four. As you can see, it will turn on these red lines. Everything that's inside the red lines, that is what your machine is going to cut. If you have anything outside of the red outline, your machine is not going to cut it. And you are going to have to cut that by hand, okay? Which is not a big deal. You can fit up to three. You are going to print this out. Even if you didn't have um, a cutting machine at home, you would just turn off the registration box and then you're going to print it. How do you print? You're going to click on the printer icon. Then you're going to work, go where it says print. You're going to select the printer that you're going to be using. I like to print from the paper tray from the back because I am going to be printing on cardstock. So it says paper source. I am going to click on paper tray. Document size 8 by 11. I have it on portrait. And the paper type, no matter what I'm printing, I always print on presentation paper max. 
I have an inkjet Tank 16600 printer. That's the printer that I'll be using. Now, I know a lot of people always say that in your preferences, you don't have all these options. Always make sure whatever printer you have to download the drivers into your laptop or computer. Then I'm going to click on OK and then I'm going to print. Once you print, you can either cut by hand or cut with your cutting machine. Don't forget if you are using your cutting machine, you need to have your registration marks on. Then if once you print it, you're going to load your paper to your Mac. You're going to go to the send panel, the send icon up here. As you can see, your machine is going to want to cut everything inside of here. So what you need to do is you're going to select everything and you're going to click where it says cut to edge. When you click cut to edge, it's just going to cut around it. Now you're going to put the settings of your choice. Usually I like to put my blade on a six. I like my four is around 28. And I'm going to leave my speed on four and then I'm going to click on send and the machine is going to cut it. Now you also have a different option. If you have business edition and you are selling this to a customer, that means that you are going to design it and you're going to send them the PDF file. How will you save that as a PDF file? You're going to go to file. You're going to go to save as, save to hard drive. Where it says save as type, you're going to click on portable document format. You're going to name it and you're going to name the file however you would like. And then you're going to email this to your customer. Now they're not able to edit nothing. All they're going to do is print and cut it. If they own a silhouette machine, then it's much easier as well. You can send them the PDF file and you can also save it as a silhouette file and email them the silhouette file for them and they can just have their cutting machine cut it for them. Another option, if you do not have a printer at home, you will do the same thing. You are going to save this as a PDF file and then you're going to print it somewhere else at a at your local printing shop so you can save it to your usb drive and go over there and print it or you can email them the file okay i have never tried as saving the pdf with the registration marks having somewhere else to print it and then come home and cut it with your cutting machine i haven't tried that yet so i hope i cover all those um areas and now we are going to put them on your party blowout All right, guys, here is the final result. If you customize them, don't forget to join my Facebook crafting group, Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge. I would love to see all your work and any other work that you guys customize. Don't forget to answer all three questions to get approved. Again, it is called Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge on Facebook. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload new tutorials. If you are a continuing subscriber, thank you so much for the continuing support. I really appreciate you guys. Comment down below any other tutorials you would like to see from me. I will highly appreciate it. Again, I hope everyone's having a blessed day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.